So in the first video, I got the, the pantry uh, all the way to the, the mudding stage. It's been sanded, it's ready. So I'm gonna finish up uh, the rest of it, this one. So I need to paint, um, then put the uh, install the tile, then do the uh, baseboard around, trim around the door, and then put up all the brackets, uh, all the shelving. And then so down in the description, I have, I'll have a link back to the first one in case you missed the uh, the first part to see how I got to this uh, stage of the, the project. And then any description about tools or any you know, anything else interesting for this project. After the last video, I had got to this point where all the drywalling was done. It was sanded. It was ready to be finished. So I'm going to work on that in this, just showing this video. And then you can remember the floor was a, was a big mess, but I'm going to do the tiling as well. You know, clean this up after I'm done painting, just because I don't want to get paint all over the tile as well. Just a refresher here too, this is what it looked like previously. Uh, before I started doing all this work, it was just weird shelves and just kind of a lot of wasted space. So this project, I just moved the wall back, conjoined all that interior space, and then uh, the shelves are gonna be put in there a lot, L-shaped, 16 inches instead of the 12 and everything. So that, we'll do that a little bit later after all the floor and everything's done. So it started off just like any painting, uh, especially when a new drywall like this, you definitely want to prime it. So you wanna seal up all that, that drywall the paper, uh, the putty, everything get ready for an, a nice coat of paint. So just, just like you do with regular painting, cut in, then roll it. Uh, you, if you've never done, used primer before, you can see through it. It's, it's fine. It, all you're trying to do is really seal that so that the paint has a better surface to attach to. So now I start working on the, the regular painting, just like normal, just cutting in uh, and then rolling. I'm not normally I would paint the, wall, the, the ceiling separate, a different color, but this is just such a small area. Uh, they're never really going to pay attention to it, so I just did the whole thing at once, made it a lot easier on myself. And so just uh, as normal, just cut in and start rolling. So again, it's kind of a little confined spot here, so it made it a little more difficult, uh, but not, not too bad, just enough to reach up. Again, I'm just doing the ceiling, rolling it. Uh, try not to get on the, uh, any of the electrical work or anything. And this is it when it was done. Uh, pretty simple. You know, kind of expected what, what you do with painting. Wasn't too bad just a little, since it was a, a small area like this. Uh, I did two coats, obviously, just because it, it's, it's brand new. And so I wanted to make it, you know, so I only have to do this once, hopefully, in my lifetime here. Uh, just leave all the electrical outlets and everything open so you don't hit any of those. And then finally on to the, what this, this whole project was about was uh, doing the shelving. So I have these adjustable brackets because I'm not sure exactly how many, you know, how we want to, to adjust them. You may, may want to change them for uh, later on. So use these heavy duty brackets. These are actually for the wire uh, baskets, but they work really good. See what I found with the brackets with the, with the melamine shelf. Uh, so I was using my laser in here just to make sure I got it vertically straight, just so it was easier uh, when I put that, because I have to put multiple brackets here, so I want to be able to get them all level to make it a lot easier. Just testing it out here, just kind of looking at it. I haven't, I'm not going to start putting up the, the shelves yet. And since I, it helps since I put up the wall, I knew exactly where the uh, studs were, or I had pre met or measured and knew they, where they were, just to make my life a little bit easier here. I'm just putting up some of the blue tape and then marking it. Just when I go put up the brackets, I can use the, uh, the laser again. I'm going to hit each one of these. So I had four. So I'm going to be uh, hitting f uh, studs on each one of the brackets just to make sure that it's extra strong. It might be a little, you know, seem like a lot, a lot but, you know, as soon as you put, start putting cans and everything on here, I just want to make sure that you never have to worry about anything sagging. So it's, it's pretty easy. I was able to get it vertically straight uh, and then... Uh, I lined up on the first one I had. I knew exactly which hole it was on so that I could get horizontally, I could get it uh, th this, the same height as well. So that, again, when I go and put these shelves, it's make it life a lot easier that it'll lay, you know, pretty much flat across it. So just get it lined up here, hit some of the screws in there or, you know, pre-drill. That would make it a little bit easier, especially since I'm going into studs to before you put the, sc the screw in there. And then I went back and double checked it with the level just to make sure each one of them was level. It doesn't really matter as much, but it's going to help, again, uh, lining up the shelves. So this one in the corner is hitting that, that last stud there. So got it got lined up, had the level still there, and then just you know put 
I think this took four or five screws that I'm putting in here. Uh, so this is going to be plenty strong, you know, all four of them into into studs with like five screws in each. Uh, and then the, those brackets are ranked. Or, I think they could, they said they can hold like 50 pounds each. So hopefully I'm not going to be putting 200 pounds or anything on each shelf, but who knows? I we have a plastic shelf downstairs. We have extra space and that thing's sagging because it was got overloaded. So I'm not worried about that. And so I, I put in each one of the uh, brackets uh, in the same hole and then put the level across it just to make sure, double check that it, it was flat, it was level. Yep, got to give myself a good thumbs up. It's a lot easier when you have the, the laser there helping out. And then now I, now I need to go around the corner because uh, I'm going to be putting, uh, get, making an L-shaped. So the, there's a stud on the corner uh, on the left there, but then j just the way it worked out, I just don't have one there, but uh, right there in the middle of the wall. But it's going to be, uh, I think, enough support there. So I'm using whatever I could find. It happened to be a spice, uh, spices around. So that was just about the right level. If so I can throw the uh, laser across the corner there and get an idea, uh, just leveling it that way as well instead of having to, to rely on the actual physical level. So you see this one in the middle there that, that's sticking out is actually I'm going to put um, the wall anchors in there. But again, it's going to be enough. Uh, just those those wall anchors are good for like 50 pounds as well. And then the, the one on the left will be uh, attached to a stud. And I'm actually going to hook the, the two together, the walls or the shelves. So I'm working on the, the flooring now that I, uh, that I got the brackets all done. Uh, I'm just using this hardy board. Uh, you can score it the same way as drywall, but just doing corners is, is a little difficult. So I scored the, the, the one long edge and then just used the uh, grinder and just, just cut it. You see it breaks off really easy. So this stuff is pretty easy. So I'm now level, getting this in. I'm just, I had to use two quarter inch. I would normally use half inch on the flooring, uh, but just because I was trying to get up to a couple different levels there of, of the existing uh, tile and the putty, the mud that's already there or the thin set. I just had to do this, but it's fine. Like, nobody's really going to should be walking on this because it's going to be under shelves, but it's going to be plenty strong. So I got that in there and then just, just follow the uh, schedule that they have for the hardy board. And you can see I actually cracked the tile here, uh, but at, once I mud it, it's going to be fine. It has this kind of marble pattern. Uh, so I'm trying to then repeat this, this the pattern that they had. It wasn't, it's offset by a third. Um, so I'm just... Again, just visually trying to make it as easy as possible. I still have the fan in there running, trying to dry off the paint or make, you know, make sure everything's uh, dry before I start putting in the tile. Uh, but so I got the the uh, spacing done correctly. And then I want to put my this one other tile that's going to go in this way. So I need to cut it to length. And it's also going to be a little bit shorter than normal because of the wall right there. Uh, so this is, actually, I'm going to dry fit all the tile in here before I start laying it just because it's pretty easy. So... Moved over, got the, uh, I'm going to cut the, the length first, just using the uh, saw here. I got a wet saw, it makes it a lot easier, especially when you're cutting large tiles like this. You're not trying to score them and break them and crack them. It makes it a lot uh, a cleaner cut on there. So just, again, go, this is the, the, the cut that's going to go against the wall. And luckily, almost every one of these cuts are just going to be covered by um, the the molding around the bottom, the, the baseboard. So it, it this makes it easy. I mean, I'm... It makes really nice cuts, uh, but it's all going to be covered up here. So I got the, the length cut, and then, again, since this was up against the wall, I need to cut it uh, to length so that it'll fit in there. So, again, it makes easy work with the table saw, or table saw, tile saw, especially wet cutting like this. So it, you see, so I actually went through and, and pre-cut everything and just laid it out, kind of spaced it before I laid it down. want to make sure the, the spacing looks good. Again, this is really easy because it's a square or a little rectangular uh, room so I didn't have to you know, work all the way and I could just sit on the one tile and on my knees and just get it all done. So I haven't put in the spacers yet uh, but I just needed to put uh, just make sure it all, it all worked correctly. And then the helper out here again uh, making the, the thin set so I mixed my own here just because I have some of this left over from when I did a, a bathroom remodel and just getting this just to the right consistency so that when you Lay it in there. The, the the ridges are you know be sufficient. So I'm working on this crack tile here first. Again, it, this was a little hard just because 
I, I don't normally have to fix tile like this, but I, I had a limited number of tile. I don't have any of the original anymore, so I just had to work with what I had. And again, I can once I get this done here, it'll be almost invisible, especially in this tiny little uh, room. So I thought I had it, and I had way too much thin set here, and it just pressed up all into the edge. I, I definitely didn't want that thin set coming up through the crack. I want to be able to put, I'm just going to be putting uh, grout in there, so I had to pull this off and struggle with this, and this took way more time than I expected to, uh, but I finally got it in there, and then here's that, that first uh, long piece in here. So using the spacers to get the uh, spacing correct, this is a little hard because it's 16 inch. I'm usually working with a little bit thinner, but it, it's it wasn't too bad so use the uh, level to get it level across all the tiles uh, to the side and then as, as I'm working I'll keep them level and try to keep them as flat as possible I didn't get the the, uh, the color exactly right on this tile but again it's gonna be covered all with with shelving so it's it, it wasn't that big of an issue it, it's actually exaggerated here with the lighting uh, it's pretty close especially with that that light coming from above uh, it's gonna be fine so I'm just laying it out all the pieces. Uh, oops, I'm, I had a one cut here, so make sure I'm not doing it on the right, or I think I was working on the pattern a little bit better on the uh, the tile, the the, the, the ingrain pattern. Um, so it's made it a lot easier having it all pre-cut and uh, set out so that I didn't have to uh, work on each piece. So at this point, I got it all laid out, uh, all the spacing equal you see I had those blue tie that blue tape on there I was just making sure I had lined up uh, the, the the way the the tiles were offset just to kind of match that pat that existing pattern of uh, the kitchen into the tra transition into this room and then just doing some finishing touches here got the uh, now that the paint was all done everything I could put the the, the electrical covers back on put the, this outlet again this, this is going to be a, a charging for the cordless vacuum so I just wanted to have a one outlet in here and put the plate on since the you know, paint was all dry and then finally get to put the light on and get that you know, thing's been hanging dangling getting in the way the whole time here uh, but I got this up so you can see why a, a lot of that you know any issues uh, with the drywall or the paint uh, can be covered up just test it out it's working thank goodness I tested it previous to this but I'm just making sure uh, that, it, the, that nothing happened in between uh, and then trying to remember how how this thing goes in here, and I remember there were there's some little sticker here that show how, how it's lined up, but this made it yeah, easy work. And then, as I mentioned, these these brackets were actually for the wire, uh, but I'm using the I'm just putting melamine on here. So there was a little tab that hooks into the, the the wire rod. So on each one of them, I had just, just had to break it off. It wasn't that, it wasn't that, that bad because that, that thing actually sticks above the surface. And then on the end, uh, again, because it's the wire, it has a little loop that that uh, hooks onto the wire rod. So I just cut these off with the angle grinder as well, just because they just looked a little bit strange. Again, a little bit more work, but nothing too bad. And then just you know, round it off, make sure there's no you know, deeper, make sure that there's nothing to be, you know, anybody can get cut or scratched on. And then went back and painted it. And I got to work on the uh, the melamine shelves finally. I, if you ever cut melamine, it, it, it can chip really easy, uh, even with a you know, nice saw blade on here. So what I found is if you put, if you put tape on it, I'm adjusting the depth here because I didn't have it correct. I always forget that. Uh, so I put some tape on the top and it keeps it from chipping. And then it's pressed down on the bottom. I'm just using some foam to help, uh, again, support it. So as I cut across it, it makes a nice clean cut and it don't end up with any chips across uh, the melamine. You can see it's nice crisp cut here because this is there's no way to hide these edges just because it's going to be uh, along the wall and there's not going to be any you know trim or anything like that on it that that can cover it uh, so just you know trying to make it as professional looking as possible here and then just uh as I, I cut each one of these i did this wall first and it's just kind of looking at it give my give, make sure it's uh the layout looks correct and finally get that you know it's always fun just to kind of see because this was the whole purpose of putting you know lots of shelving in here and you can see how it, it helps to have those adjustable brackets so if we ever want to change it i think i did like 14 inch on each one and then like 18 inches off the ground but you know things may change and then the one thing uh just the way these brackets are set up is they actually tilt front to back i guess it's a safety feature uh, just so you know things aren't falling off but then the pro so, but then it made it difficult because this is leaning back to front on the side and i'm trying to make this l-shaped which is leaning back to front on the other side 
So I had to put in some shims here. I'm obviously not going to leave it like this, but I just wanted to kind of get a visual just to see how well it works. So if I shimmed it on the back here, so I, I made some little shims and ended up painting them white and just putting them in there. And so this is what, what I'm doing here is just cutting off uh, those two. And I just don't feel like waiting. So I'm just going to use some super glue. If you never use this, it's called CA glue. Uh, and then that activator, and what that does is when an activator hits the super glue, it instantly cures it with instant like within you know a second or two so just enough time where i can press it together and make a you know a, a good enough shim here like this just had a little bit extra on the outside so so now i'm working on put making that that l shape and shimming it out uh you can see how much a gap there so i, I was using that and then I'm, i made these little tabs so i'm connecting the l the the small piece to the long piece uh and then screwing in as well uh, just so the these shelves aren't moving around and once they start attaching it in all these different directions here it became really sturdy it's it's never going to slip and it's not going to be it's not going to tilt forward at all either so melamine is a little hard it wasn't too bad though uh but i just you know pre-drilled it just to make sure well i, I had to pre-drill the screw isn't going to do it itself go through that melamine so just pre-drill it with a small screw and then put, just drive a screw through and then, and make sure that the screw didn't go through the the, the top so I had it measured it was just the thickness of the bracket and the uh the melamine which is three quarters of an inch but so then I put it on just on a slight bit of an angle and now they got the shelving all done or you know to as, as as good as I can I start working on the grout so mix up some grout this really didn't need much I ended up using way too much here uh, just because those tiles are pretty big and then that 16 inch gap was, wasn't much I still had some of this left over when whoever installed the uh the, the kitchen so if you ever used grout before, or it's not it's it's not too difficult. You just want to kind of you know work it in and make sure you get it pack it all the way down into this into the seams into those grout lines, so that it's it's strong enough. So I actually have a uh, um, epoxy float here, but it's good enough for this you know, cementitious uh, grout. So I put uh, some. You're trying to to get it down. You don't want to go directly parallel to the lines. You want to come at an angle. Uh, so that's what what I'm doing here is I'm the, the, it's at about I'm you know, come working it in packing it down into there so that they're full so that when you go back and fix it or you know clean it up uh, it's 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 not gonna you know press down further so what you do is come in at a 45 degree angle uh, both vertically and then horizontally across the lines and then as a as a last step once you get it packed in here uh, you then come at almost a 90 degree angle and you want to clean off as much as you can off the tile so here i'm still packing it in and then right at the end i'll come in at a real steep angle like this and clean across the tile uh, clean across the, 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 the grout and then after that was done you leave it just follow the instructions leave it for, i think it's like five or ten minutes uh, sometimes it depends on more how long it takes to cure and then you want to get a sponge that has almost no water in it at all and you just want to start cleaning off the tile just so that that uh doesn't the grout doesn't dry on there and you're not trying to finish off the grout lines right now in fact you don't want to get them too wet because you want that uh, the grout to cure because it's, it's a type of cement so i'm just lightly going across here there's a couple places where i think i left it a little bit too long and started drying on the uh, tile but this stuff that really doesn't dry on the on that uh, smooth tile but it's good to just get it up make life a little bit easier on yourself and then here it is after uh, it's done so now I'm working on the uh, baseboard. So I'm just measuring it out so that the shelves in there, the floors in there. This is kind of the last bit. So I need to do this. Uh, I like to have this tool just because just it's never 45 um, degree walls. Even though you know I did it, I just think you know, having to work with a little bit what I had. I think this was just slightly off uh, 90, but it wasn't wasn't too bad. So just double check each side and i like dry fitting uh all the dry or the, the baseboard in here makes it a little bit easier uh just before you start nailing it up so get out the miter saw here and then i'm working on this is the dry or the baseboard that i've used in just the rest of the house as well i'm always trying to remember like okay i need to i know i need a 45 on the other side i'm kind of staring at here <laughs> trying to remember which way it is looking at the saw imagining it and I'm like yep i think i have it incorrect so i'm trying to do, do two inside corners I'm like yeah all right now i got it finally uh so 
each so this is going on that back wall so it'll be a 45 inside for for both of them just making sure so i like to cut it not perfect the first time and then just kind of work it you know see how much put it, try to dry fit it in there see how much i need to cut off maybe before i cut it too short the first time and then ruin the, you know the whole thing so uh, again so i got my my 245s all right now I look at it yep that's exactly what i needed and i'm going to be putting a trim around the door and this i'm putting three and a half inch trim which is too big uh, just because of that that little weird bump out that, that I have to deal with here. So just going through and measuring that before I trim it on the, uh, rip it on the table saw. And I like to measure it in a couple places because, you know, sometimes it's not perfectly vertical. And then take the smallest one and then uh, it'll just, you know, I'll work with the, the caulk and just seal up, you know, any gap there. So just passing through here on the saw what i needed to uh, the width to get it fitting in there so i have a, enough of a reveal around the door i uh, usually used to do like a quarter inch or maybe three sixteenths depending on you know what looks nice and this is inside a pantry hopefully nobody's looking at it but just like following the same idea so as i mentioned i like to dry fit the dry or the the baseboard in there i got all the angles cut uh, make sure it's it's correct and it's level because sometimes if you work from one corner to the other you are start out you end up uh, vertically the floor is not not exactly straight and you end up with some weird corners so I uh, get to get this all worked in here um, so now it, it it's correct I start working on just nailing it in um, so I'm gonna work on the the wall around the start around the door first just because I, I know that one needs to to butt up against the, the baseboard it makes it a little bit easier uh, so I work from the corners out uh, just because Again, it just depends what makes it easiest for you and just, just the, the situation. And you want to be hitting uh, the studs behind it as long as you, as long as you can. Uh, sometimes you can hit the stud in the bottom. And then the last portion, which is the worst, is caulking up all the joints, uh, all, all the cracks on the baseboard. But it's just something that has to be done. Um, and so you want to go you know, every corner, every seam, where the nails were actually you end up using i like using drywall or, or you know wood putty to fill those in just because it's hard to get it perfect with the uh with the caulking so you can see you have one that 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 seam here is is i have to caulk along there so you have caulk along the top uh again every corner so got all that done so i'm finally finished with this project uh, this one there's a kind of a big gap there so i have to work on that one a little bit later uh, but everything else is uh, finally done this took about two weeks to do just because it was a, it was a lot of you know deconstruction or taking it down uh, painting drywalling tile just getting all the but it, everything came out like i said i have to like triple the space here now and there's a lot more a lot deeper shelves i think there's the light switch for the light that i put in there as well and i'll get all the the uh the l shape uh the bra of the uh shelving it's all leveled out everything screwed in this stuff is really strong it's never going to <laughs> collapse or anything and it, it's adjustable again it's like three quarters of an inch the melamine uh, particle board so it's going to be plenty of strength and as i said adjustable so we may later on need to be you know put it something different but we definitely ended up with uh, a lot better pantry much more usable so i was happy that god that i finished this project